Now, now, it was in 1980. It was like eight years after you were ordained as a priest that you were eight or nine years that you were ordained as a bishop. Was it not? Yes, uh, it was um, nine years after I was ordained priest that I was uh, consecrated a bishop. Now, when did the possibility and how did the possibility come up that you might become a bishop? Well, interestingly, there was a conference uh, held at the Episcopal Divinity School in uh, Cambridge, the seminary, to talk about women in the Episcopate, women as bishops. And I gave uh, one of the addresses at that conference, and I said, let's face it, we're talking about white women, they've got ten years in the priesthood, they've got the visibility, da 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 and um, following that conference, uh, I was asked by uh, a, a friend who was re representing some women in this diocese of Massachusetts if I would allow my name to go forward in the uh, be put into the uh, nomination process. And I said, "Well, let me go pray about it." And about a month later, I said. Uh, yeah, you can put my name in. I don't think it's going to uh, go any place, um, but go ahead and put it in. Well, at each step in the process, I thought it's not going to go any further. It's not going to go any further. Uh, and uh, even as I, uh, people came to Philadelphia to interview uh, people that uh, I knew and to hear me preach and whatnot, I thought it's not going to go any further. And I met with the whole nominating committee, and I thought this isn't going any further. And even as I was nominated on the slate of uh, five people, I thought, not a chance. <laughs> and I came to Massachusetts and met with people who were going to be uh, in a series of meetings of, with people who were going to be voting in the election. And the thing that was uppermost in my mind was, I'm never going to see these people again in life, and so I can say anything that is on my mind, which is exactly what I did. How did you, how did you hear about it? And what was your reaction when you, when you learned that I had been elected? <clears throat> Total disbelief. Total disbelief. And um, uh, although I have to say that as the election proceeded, I got a phone call after each ballot, and it was a, a two person race between myself and the person who, whose name had come in by petition. And it was obvious that the clergy were heavily supporting me. And then the lay people uh, came along. Uh, but when I received the call that I had been elected, um, there was still disbelief on my part that this could have happened, uh, given my background and what have you. So, um, when I was informed, the people have made a choice and have elected you as suffragan bishop. And I said, I humbly accept. And then that bell went off in my head that said, you're not supposed to say that. You're supposed to say, I will go and pray about this, and I will get back to you. <laughs> so, but I had already accepted. So, too late. Um, but um, uh, that's, that was it. I, it must have been that state of disbelief. I mean, yeah, that, must made, that made me say, I humbly accept. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, I mean, for, I'm sure for some time afterwards, you had to sort of keep kind of going, wait yeah, a minute, this yeah. is, 
this is real. You're, you're absolutely right. Uh, there were times when I kept pinching myself because uh, I, I had trouble believing that I could have been elected, even up to the day of my consecration. Um, and, and for a while after that, and you see, there is a protracted process following the election. Uh, during which the standing committees of a majority of dioceses in this country have to consent to the election, and a majority of bishops ha having jurisdiction, bishops of diocesan bishops, a majority of those have to consent to the election so that it becomes the will of the church because you are elected a bishop for the whole church, even though elected by a diocese. And so that consent process was touch and go for a while. And uh, ultimately, the, within the, the, the time frame specified, the uh, required uh, number of consents were received from both standing committees and and bishops. And so the consecration could go forward. But in the meantime, in the interim, did you not, I mean, the, the, the hostility from some uh, areas was, was fierce. Did you not receive uh, death threats? Yeah, nobody can hate like Christians. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, 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 the mail, some of the mail that I got from church people was incredible, unbelievable. Um, and yes, there, there were death threats and, um, uh, and there were protests uh, uh, to objections at the consecration service itself. Um, and I, uh, what, the Archbishop uh, uh, in London was, as I understand it, not exactly. Good. I don't think he was at all thrilled. Uh, but um, um, there really wasn't anything he could do. Uh, Did he not say that he would not recognize uh, acts that were done by a woman? Uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury did not say that. I, the Bishop, the uh, Bishop of London, certainly said it. But the Church of, I mean, the Church of England, uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury would not have. Um, uh, recognized um, any acts of mine because the Church of England uh, uh, until this day does not permit women bishops. So, but uh, the, the bishops of the church in this country certainly would. Uh, but there were other provinces of the communion where bishops would not recognize uh, uh, ecclesiastical or Episcopal acts of mine. I also understand that there was some concern uh, at the time there was a, 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 an increasing movement to sort of bring uh, the Episcopal Church and the Roman Catholic Church closer together and that, that, that some people felt that you know th that your uh, consecration as bishop would endanger all of that. I think that was a red herring. Uh, the conversations between the Roman Church and the Anglican Church have been going on for decades, for decades. And ordinations are, are just one area in which uh, there are differences. We've got, th there are other things that separate us, other issues that separate Rome and uh, Canterbury, and um, whereas the um, uh, election and consecration of women bishops wasn't going to be helpful to that dialogue, it was not the great stumbling block in that ongoing conversation. So, it, 
all of these prophecies, all of these the folk who were coming out saying, you know, that she's going to destroy the, the, the relationship between the Anglicans and the Catholics and she's going to, the entire Episcopal Church and the hierarchy, that everything's going to fall apart. I mean, it was as if the, the sky was going to fall in. Truly. Yeah. And, were, uh, you, were you surprised at the level of upset? What surprised me um, was um, the, um, the, the vehemence and the vitriol um, that um, uh, some people uh, ex expressed. Um, it, um, I, I didn't expect, uh, you know, everybody to be pleased by this. But the mean-spirited things that uh, some people um, uh, said uh, and did were um, a little surprising. A one dio uh, diocesan newspaper ran my picture on the front page with a black slash across my face like a no smoking ad. Um, and um, people raised all kinds of questions about my personal life. Um, and um, uh, the fact that I was a divorced person uh, they, are, they said there were there had never been a person uh, elected bishop who was already divorced and we had you know, divorces after people <laughs> came elected but um, and then um, <clears throat> other just mean spirited things that were were said and written about me attacked you. Uh, in terms of your intellectual background and your, as you pointed out earlier, the degrees, how how much was race a factor in all of this? Oh, I because racism is so pervasive in the church, I'm sure that was a part of it as well, and uh, uh, that, uh, I, that they had a lot of ammunition, uh, you know, that that I was, I was. A woman. I was black. I was divorced. I had not gone to seminary. I had only been ordained nine years. Um, uh, that I was outspoken. That I was uh, left of center. Uh, you know, anything they wanted to use, they 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 used. How did you get through all that? Because there were enough people supportive <clears throat> and confident in my ability to uh, exercise this office and enough people praying for me um, that I felt I felt supported and um, so I was able to to do what I was called to do. Were there never any moments during all of that that you, you know, went quietly into your, you know, bedroom at night and said, you know, who I, needs I, this? Oh yeah, <laughs> many days I said, who needs it? But on balance, you know, it was um, it was a good. Uh, ministry. And on the day of the consecration, there were 8,000 people? 8,500 people there and 62 bishops. I think uh, that may be the largest number of bishops that have participated in a consecration because all the bishops lay hands on you. There was also heavy security. Oh yes, <coughs> uh, on, uh, there was a woman sitting directly behind me who was a, 
the Boston uh, Police Department detective. Uh, and uh, she was prepared to uh, help get me out of there if any violence broke out. Um, the uh, Boston Police Department offered me a bulletproof vest to wear uh, that day, which I declined. I thought, you know, if some idiot is going to shoot me, what better place to go than at an altar? Um, but, um, uh, yeah, there were... Were you afraid? I had some uh, uh, trepidation, uh, but... Um, when I walked into that auditorium in procession and people greeted me so warmly, um, it, 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 it kind of just fell away. I didn't know what was going to unfold in the, in the service in terms of the protests. I didn't know whether there were going to be a lot or, you know, just what what was going to be said, but I was confident that if God hadn't meant for this to happen, it wasn't going to happen. It wouldn't have happened, and that was my my guiding spirit that day. And I understand that your mother was in that auditorium also. Oh, my mother was priceless. I said, keep your eye on my mother. So I said, if she starts patting her foot, these protesters are in trouble. <laughs> because she was at that age where, you know, she felt she could say exactly what was on her mind. And I had visions of her just you know, shouting out loud, what is your problem? <laughs> this is my daughter's consecration. But she got up from her seat, came across the aisle, and took me firmly by the wrist. And she said, have no fear. God is on our side, and everything is going to be all right. And then she looked me dead in the eye and said, this is your mama. <laughs> And so, I knew it was going to be all right. <laughs> <laughs> what a day. What a moment. Yeah. Once you had reached that point, did you feel that the battle, the battles had really been won? Oh, not by a long shot. Um, no, no. I, um, I knew that from that day out, I was going to be living in a fishbowl and that I was going to have to be constantly proving myself uh, to supporters and detractors alike. Uh, the battle was just beginning. And people, some people expected you to be as radical uh, as a bishop as you had been earlier in terms of, you know, sort of laying waste and, and, and really changing, not just speaking out, but now being in a position to theoretically change everything. Bishops don't have that much power. <laughs> they really don't, especially suffragan bishops who are assisting, assistant bishops. Um, uh, there was one group that uh, declared the final crisis has come upon the Episcopal Church. Um, it's nice to know that you're the final crisis. Um, but um, there, there, still, there was not a lot that I could change. Um, <clears throat> I uh, have some impact on the way the Diocese of Massachusetts uh, lived and, 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 and did its mission and ministry, but not that I was going to have, uh, I wasn't going to change the church by Saturday night. I